What are you doing? Where are you I going? I'm crawling over here. Where are you going? Are you hiding? What do you call these things? Tree chaliers? Tree chaliers. Chandelier and tree. Tree a leer. Tree a So we're putting up three tree a The coolest thing is, Brian pulled these things out of the garbage. Literally, right, Brian? Yes. They were throwing them away. Brian saw them and said, hey, they were used for a party that were one of our pod customers. And now we're repurposing them at multiple Aquascape Artists of the Year projects. I think they're plugged in. They're real cool. You gotta reach for the extension cord. There we go. <laughs> Greg's setting up some moonscaping. <laughs> Do the Japanese Reiki thing. It's supposed to look like ripples in the ocean. Yeah, it looks actually pretty good. Man, you got talent. I don't care what anybody says. Good morning, everybody. It is Chris at Team Aquascape. We are back at day three. It is hump day here inside the Sandbox studio. I've got Chris down here. So Chris, what is going on today? How you feeling? I'm a little tired, but we're here, man. We're kicking it. So today, we obviously we have excavated our pond yesterday. We got liner in. We've got our basin or negative edge liner down in there. That's lapped up and over this. A lot of times we'll just take and tuck a pond liner down inside of there. But I've done it a little differently in this installation because I'm worried about water levels containing and holding that pond water where yep. we need it. So instead of doing this, I did this. So essentially this is pond liner, dips down, we've got a tack of gravel, and now we've got it up and high so we can run that entire edge on the outside where we want that. And we've done this a lot in our installations. It prevents the bleed off when you have foam. Foam is great, but we found over time, sometimes that'll break down. Yep. So we'll either bib a liner over the top of that and, and foam that in, that holds it better. But when we're really want to hold that water level through in case of a shut off. When yep. it's running, it's not that big of a deal. We always do this. It makes a little bit more of a tricky situation hiding this liner. All we really want to do is have something, I was asking the guys, we have like a log or something here so that we can obtain this liner and backfill that with gravel here because all we're really doing is wanting to hold that liner edge. But to me, the idea of the log makes more sense because everything's flowing this way. And if you've ever been out in nature and you've seen all those logs damming up things, yep. it kind of makes sense. And this would be the build Way, the breakaway where that waterfall is going to be created there just so i'm clear or more so that the viewers are clear of, of what's happening this liner right here the rock that your hand is on is a frame rock and then the one to the left of it is also a frame rock yes show me where where the water is going okay so perfect thank you for pulling that down so this is going to be our waterfall yep so now we've got this below these guys yep if we need to adjust this weir we can come back in here and do some other stuff in order to raise water level in the pond based on exactly. the thickness of that water coming over the weir stone so that's awesome this liner the pond liner comes up over our little weir that we've created here comes down this is where the overlap happens right because our yeah. basin liner comes up underneath the this pond guy, liner and then up and down over this weir here so the pond liner does the opposite where it goes up down and then back up and that's the liner that we see here yes so what we want to do is we want to make sure that the edge of this stays the same height as this rock because we're not exactly sure I think we have a pretty good idea how thick that water is going to be through here but we want to make sure that this liner stays up high enough yeah, to be able to contain all the water in the pond based on the thickness of that waterfall how high the water level is going to be driven up behind these two frame rocks going down so what we need to do is make sure that that's the same all the way across so that we can make sure that we're maintaining yeah. our makes more sense visually we can keep this knowing that this is pure 100 percent containment yeah. i don't have to worry about going, oh we have to foam all this in over there yeah and we can get a lot of bleed off that way too when you say bleed off that means a hole in the foam somewhere where water is able to leak out so we we're talking about the, the bleed off that can occur when you do the foaming or whatever you know with with a bib liner this gives me 100 percent containment and i don't have to worry about doing anything over there perfect just keeping my my pond liner at my edge that we set yep and then we, all we have to do is adjust this for our water level Perfect. obviously you have to keep in mind that if this backs up too high so then we can adjust this but to me it just makes you know perfect sense like you're edging a pond okay so that's perfect guys and girls out there you've seen us do bib liners in a variety of ways this is an alternative and it makes a lot of sense based on the way chris explained it and keeping all that water going exactly where we want it and keeping that liner up high all the way around so now that we've got this liner kind of bibbed up in there pinned up against the back side of the rocks the next step is just starting to disguise hide it make it look the back side like of the waterfalls and then that way we can control the flow of how it gets through here you know make this look like a little bit of a beach area before it just you know falls off the mountain edge there cool all Perfect. right should we get going get after all right
So Mitchell, a lot of people are gonna wonder how the hell we got the plumbing ran um, from inside the basin over here, which our pump is located back behind that rock work over there. Uh -huh. Explain what, what are you doing? Where are you I going? I'm crawling over here. Where are you going? Are you hiding? So right now, I don't know if it's hard, gonna be hard to see, but we've got Mitchell underneath the deck. He's got the three inch line that we've ran behind the liner. Oh, look at that. We've got Matt over here. This is high production value. So we've got Matt over here giving Mitchell some spotlight, but that's our three inch line that's coming from our five to nine pump. And we are running it underneath this decking structure so it will be behind the liner once we get the liner affixed to the bottom of this decking so what we're going to do is get our plumbing hooked up that line will run all the way this way and then it will daylight back out where you can see that little trough dug between the deck and the liner and once that plumbing is all hooked up we'll run it along the back side of our dock of our warehouse bay right here and then we're going to bring this liner and fabric in and we are going to affix it using two by fours and laying the two by fours perpendicular to the joint and it will pin that liner up along the bottom side of that deck. We'll just screw the two by fours or two by sixes into these joists as we go across. I will make sure that we show that to you, but that is how we are attaching the liner to the deck. But we wanna make sure that we get this plumbing right here ran all the way back before we get that liner in. I got four different colors. <laughs> so when's the last time you spray painted rocks? It's been a while. <laughs> All right, so Chris didn't like the colors of our faux rocks, so uh, he's putting his little uh, artist of the year touches on them right now. Let's see if uh, he made a mistake. Killing the ozone layer there, buddy. We are back, it is day four here inside the Artist of the Year Sandbox Studio. As you can see, we've got water in the pond behind me. We made huge amount of progress yesterday in finishing up the basin area, getting our stepper pathway leading to the pass. We've got a majority of the waterfalls built back behind me right here, as you can see. So we're gonna work on buttoning that up today, getting this entire side completely finished, hopefully before lunchtime. You can see we've got the biofall set up over there. We've got our liner attached and we are just kind of wrapping up how we want that water to come out of the biofalls. We've got a lot of foaming to do. We've got a lot of edge work, taping down folds, getting lights in, but we are going to completely transform this by doing the last 10, 15% of the installation and then getting this whole side partitioned off. So my job 
job is to work with a handful of our guys, Corey, Matt, Grant, Micho, and Taylor. And we are gonna focus our energies on just getting this entire area finished by lunch. And Chris is going to attempt to do the same over here. So I'm gonna take you through the pathway, walk down and kind of show you the progress that he made. So he and Brian Dolly came over here yesterday afternoon at about two o'clock, brought the big machine over and started plowing through this area of the stream, Pondless Waterfalls. If you remember, these rocks were those fake stones just to give you some scale with what's happening. You can see now they are already working into the base of the waterfalls that is coming down from this enormous hillside, which is the backside of that fire pit area. We've got our two three inch pipes right there. Those are going to be bringing water from the two five to nine pumps that are located in the pump vault area back over underneath that fake rock. So that's just going to be a big series of cascades down and through here, large pooling area, and then shooting that water down. So we still have an incredible amount of work ahead of us, but I think dividing up into two teams of about four to five people a piece, we're really going to make large, large amount of progress again today and really start seeing things finished. We are so close to being finished over on the other side of the booth where the pond and everything is located. So I can't wait to get that wrapped up so that we can come back over here, combine forces and really kind of push our way back out through the booth. So Chris, what do you think of our chanteliers? I love them, they're awesome. <laughs> Trialiers. Trialiers? You'll, you'll get it. Trialiers, <laughs> I think chanteliers, chanteliers is better. What do you like, chanteliers or trialiers? Well, a chandelier, everybody knows what it is. What's yeah, a, so. What's a chant? A ch trialier. Trialier, okay. Trialier. Be a so Brian, you actually made these from the customer's dead trees. What was it? They're, they were crab apple trees. We uh -huh. just cut them down and strung them. And he used them for a party and uh, he was going to toss them. And I said, no, 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 no. We'll repurpose those and we we're going to use them for a flower show. That never happened. Flower so this is dead. the flower show so for Chris. We've just done seven weeks of flower shows. <laughs> Yeah. Seven Whoa. weeks of flower shows. <laughs> That's cool. When this is lit up over here, sitting back here, looking that way with the fire and those back in there. Yeah. Okay, now you got to go to Texas, buddy. <laughs> It is Friday and we're finished. <laughs> we're sitting in what would be my favorite spot of this whole business. In fact, let's, let me back up a second. Because at this point of the day, or this point of the week, with every past artist, I'm kind of like, whew, Just we're done, really, right? Yeah. Like, we're finished. Yeah. And we kind of sit back and tell stories and joke. But this week, I think you pushed us harder than anybody else did. The other thing I was kind of going through my head is the name of your company, Nature's Creations. And I think it's pretty appropriate. Like, you would not guess we're in a warehouse besides that constant clanking yeah. going on behind <laughs> going on behind us. But what an awesome, awesome accomplishment for you, your wife, Brian Dolly, who came yeah. down, our crew, and everybody working together. I think it was probably, I'm not going to say it was my favorite build, but there's so many awesome things that I know I want to try to implement with designs for future projects. Sure. My mind starts spinning on what can I do with my own yard. I have a sunken pit, but it's not, I mean, that's like nine feet sunken, oh, right? Easy. I mean, it's nine, and with the trees, you're 20 feet, yeah. right? So this is, I mean, <laughs> it's pretty awesome. So thanks for being such an inspiration. You guys, thanks for joining us. You want to see the reveal? Let me show you. Ah, no, can't show you. You, you got to check out, you know the routine. Go to Greg Whitstock, the Pond Guy channel. Make sure you check that out. Leave lots of comments. Tell Chris and the rest of his company what he's been doing right and what you enjoyed most about this build and uh, and what we can do next time. We're going to do it again next year. Huh? Oh boy. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. Like, comment, subscribe. You know the routine. Bye. Oh, <laughs>